Hi, AppSec engineers. Welcome to the first video in the series of security engineering interview questions. In this series, I'll be looking at different types of security engineering interview questions that have been famous in sites like Glassdoor, Indeed, and so on. Our question for today is, what is XML external entities? Now, we're going to be looking at this question. We're going to be looking at what external XML external entities or XXE actually is. And finally, we'll be looking at some demos of attack and defense against XML external entities. Let's get started. We're going to be constantly putting out content on AppSec, cloud security, container security, DevSecOps, and Kubernetes security. Now, if you like this sort of content, you should consider liking and subscribing to this channel on YouTube. In addition, it would be great if you could follow us on Twitter and on LinkedIn. So basically, I'm assuming that most of you know about XML. Basically, XML is probably one of the most important data exchange formats on the internet. Now, you would probably be thinking, what the hell is XML? Doesn't everybody, the, everybody use JSON? Doesn't everybody, all the cool kids use either JSON or YAML? What the hell is XML? Now, uh, XML is still extensively used. Before JSON and YAML and all these things became popular, XML was the ruler, the king of the hill, if you will, right? So basically what used to happen was when an application needed to talk to another and exchange some data between applications, XML used to be the format that used to be used quite extensively. It is still extensively used. It's not gone by any stretch of the imagination. XML is still extensively used. So it's used in configuration files, especially if you have that old Java application, or if you have docx or any word excel powerpoint document these are all xml's they're essentially just xml's uh, zipped up xml's they're nothing more than that right so xml's are quite extensively used even today now one of the important facets of xml is the dtd right so the dtd basically is like this templating system which also serves as a validating system for xml so for instance let's say you want to uh, validate a particular xml against a template or uh, you know structure an xml against a template then you can use a dtd or a doc type definition now you can refer to a doc type definition like you see here right you see that in this case we have a variable called writer which is referencing a doc type definition as an external file which is example.dtd which is an external file now, XML external entities is really a parser driven flaw. And what it is, is really about what if your parser essentially resolved things that were dangerous, right? So the question you really have to ask yourself with XML external entities is what if your parser starts resolving things that you don't want it to resolve, right? That is what you really need to think about with XML external entities. What if your parser starts to resolve things like this? So let's say your uh, user or your attacker uh, uploads this. For instance, an XML which has a variable called writer that resolves to file colon slash 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 etsy password. Obviously, that's a very bad thing because they can start reading files on your server environment and then start exfiltrating data or then start to expand their reach into your server environment. This is what makes XML external entities a pretty bad flaw and a pretty dangerous one because it has a variety of different execution cases that it can do. This is a you know remote code execution local file include style uh, attack that I'm showing you here. So an attacker could essentially what the attacker could do is uh, the attacker could upload an XML that would reference this file or read from a source file or something like that and then start uh, you know, exfiltrating that data back to the attacker uh, from that XML upload. So that's something that can go really, really bad with XML external entities. Also with XML external entities, you could have a scenario where it resolves to a particular IP address on a local network or a URL on a local network that you don't have access to. So let's say you have an internal network that has a bunch of protected resources and you are trying to attack this application. You could use that application and its XML parser to be able to redirect and gain access to internal resources like so. In this case, you'll see that it's resolving to a CouchDB database that is pulling out all the docs from the database and dumping it in that variable that the attacker can now access. You can actually do all kinds of interesting things with XML external entities. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is that XML external entities is really about your XML parser 
causing this kind of a vulnerability because your parser is resolving these DTD variables without you probably even knowing about it. And that's really what makes XML external entities happen. And we'll see this in our example and our lab example from AppSec Engineer coming up pretty soon. So without further ado, let's get started with actually exploring a lab on XML external entities with our AppSec Engineer platform and see how it actually works. Let's see how actually XML external entities works and how an attacker could potentially exploit it. So this, I've logged into AppSec Engineer, as you can see, I'm gonna go into my courses and I'm going to go into the course that actually has this, which is our uh, injections course, which should be somewhere here. Gonna look for the injections course. And here we are, we have the injections course right here. And in the injections course, what I'm going to do is go into the XXE lab. So I'm going to start up a lab on XXE, which is our XXE attack and defense lab. So let's get started with this lab and uh, you'll see how it is to actually exploit an XXE. I'm not going to be showing the defense in this video because uh, we, I'll just talk about it, but you can actually do a full attack and defense in AppSec Engineer, which is a really cool part of our platform. So I'm going to just provision, which will set up a dedicated lab for me. And uh, very soon I'll be able to get started with the XXC attack in itself. And I'll be looking at a real world application that's vulnerable to XML external entities. So now my lab is ready to go. I'm going to get started. I'm going to access the lab. And as always, it spins up the lab environment right on my browser. I'm just going to increase the screen resolution so that everybody can see this clearly on the video. So I'm going to open up a new terminal and I'm going to use the instructions here. I need to do a little bit of setup first and then I can get started with my actual lab itself. So, uh, Let's get started with the setup. So now I'm done with my setup, I'm gonna get started with actually running the vulnerable example. So we have a Java app, as you can see, we ran a setup for a Java app, and this Java app is vulnerable to XML external entities. So it allows you to upload an XML, and uh, as an attacker, I'm gonna upload some dangerous XML, which is gonna cause some kind of an XML external entities that I can use for furthering my attack, right? So basically, what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna use this application, I'm gonna upload some malicious XML, and probably try and, uh, exploit this flaw with XML external entities. So let's get started with that. 
So I'm going to open up this application on another tab. This application is running on port 8888, as you would probably see in the instructions. So we have a detailed set of instructions that we have for each lab. As you can see, all of the, the, the entire lab and the lab environment is accessible entirely on the browser. You don't need any additional software. It makes it really easy for you to access stuff with the AppSec Engineer lab environment. So here we have a simple upload capability. Uh, we're going to upload some files and I'm going to show you how these files actually get uploaded, right? So I'm going to upload a couple of files first. I'm going to download them to my machine and then upload them. So let's actually um, So I'm going to download some of these XM, these test XML files that I need to actually on my local machine. You can do this on your local machine and then upload it as well. Now I have them on my desktop. So the first thing I'm going to do is upload this file. Now let's look at the users.xml file, right? So if I do users.xml, it's nothing. It's just a simple file that has a users. Uh, it looks like a database of users, right? So it has a users tag and it has a bunch of users. It has two users in this case. It looks pretty straightforward and pretty harmless, which it is. So let's actually upload this file and see what's happening here. This is going to get parsed by my application and it's going to neatly render this as a table, right? Now, this is what we want. This is a pretty easy way to do things because this renders as a table and the XML is just uh, getting parsed and rendered as a table. Now let's try and do something a little bit more interesting. Now let's look at our next file, which is our malicious XML file, right? So basically in this XML file, if I do, if I look at this XML file, it looks almost exactly like the previous one, but you will see that in this case, we have a doc type definition and we have an entity variable called int. And this is referring to a supposedly a DTD file but this DTD file is actually a Etsy password file of my server, which is obviously very, very dangerous, right? So I referred to this with, uh, I expand this variable here and I refer to this variable and as a result, I should be able to trigger an XML external entities. Now, this is something which we're going to try and do now. So when I try and do this, you will see that if I upload this file, you will see that instead of the first name, I'm actually dumping the entire Etsy password, which is crazy, right? Because you'll, you'll see that I'm able to actually get access to that backend uh, server and the server environment. I can start exfiltrating all kinds of files from there and probably doing all kinds of interesting things from that, uh, from that particular file. So I can probably even look at source code or things like that. Uh, inside that particular file and then see what else I can do with that file. So this Etsy password is just one example. You can, of course, start to uh, exfiltrate other files and things like that. And you should be able to uh, compromise XML external entities quite comprehensively with this example. Now, let's quickly look at the code and we'll see what's actually going wrong here, right? Now, the code actually, there's nothing specifically that the developer is doing wrong. It's just that the XML parser in this case that's being used in Java automatically resolves variables. And that's something that we want to stop doing, right? So we don't want the XML parser to automatically resolve variables without the developer requiring them to resolve variables. So a lot of XML parsers by default over enthusiastically resolve the variable. So we don't want that to happen. We want it to resolve only when we want it to resolve as a developer. So in this case, we're actually doing nothing much wrong. It's just that our XML parser in itself is vulnerable because it resolves variables by default. So you'll see that there's nothing happening. I'm just using, so this is a Java app like you see here. It's literally just resolve, it's just parsing the XML file. There's nothing the developer seems to be doing very wrong. The only thing that the developer is seems to have forgotten about is that we need to add some functionality that will not enable default resolution. And that essentially prevents against XML external entities. So when somebody asks you this question in a security uh, engineering interview, you need to probably look at that as a, as a uh, response, right? So in XML external entities, it's the parser that's usually at fault. So if you're able to disable that capability within the parser, you really have uh, prevented against XML external entities. Of course, you should still be doing input validation and all those useful things, but 
in this case, what you should ideally do is disable the resolution of those uh, types of DTD uh, doc types, right? So in this case, if you look at the secure variant, you will see that the developer has done something much more secure. He's disabled the general parameters, the entities and external entities have been disabled. The developer has been able to successfully disable this. So even if I upload uh, files with all of these doc type definitions or these variables that have to be resolved, it won't resolve, it just won't work. And that's why uh, I'm able to successfully prevent against XML external entities with my secure variant, but my insecure variant, by default, the parser automatically just resolves it. And that's the problem with XML external entities. Thanks for watching another episode of Security Engineering Interview Questions from AppSec Engineer. The labs we did were part of our application security learning path in AppSec Engineer. So if you're interested, check out appsecengineer.com for more details. If you like this video and like the kind of content we make, do like, share, and subscribe to it on YouTube and share it with your friends. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.